The 57-foot suburban coach was built and introduced to the British railway network in the 1950s and 60s in an attempt to replace older designs and introduce more standardised fleet of rolling stock. A longer version with gangway corridors was produced for mainline working, whilst the shorter 57-foot coach without a gangway was intended for suburban routes with tighter curves. Join me in this video as I build and review the Dapol 57-foot Suburban Coach Kit in 00 gauge. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. As always, before I start the video, please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. So let's start the video by taking a look at the contents of the kit. As you can see, the parts come in a plastic bag with a card header. Not a bad way of packaging the kit as you can easily see the contents and if anything is missing. The lack of box, however, does mean that it is possible that things could get damaged or poke a hole in the bag and fall out. The version I've got here is C096C, which is a brake coach in an unlined livery, but I'll talk about the different kits that are available a bit later. On the back of the card you get information about the history of the model, some safety warnings and an address for contacting Dapol. On opening the plastic bag I met with a number of loose parts and some more bags containing more components. As usual I'm going to take a look at the instructions first. A single A4 sheet of paper contains the step-by-step -step images and a description of each step. I rather like that they've used colour images as it really helps make things clearer. I did find the paragraphs a bit long to read, but generally the instructions are ok quality wise. I will discover a big problem with them as I start the build, but more on that when I get to it. Let's take a look at the parts of the kit. First you get an insert for the seats. These are moulded in a dark red colour, and you can paint these any colour you wish really, the instructions not being particularly clear on any specific colour, so I will leave it as it is because it looks perfectly fine to me. A clear plastic sprue holds the two window components and they are moulded to a good quality, but the plastic is less than perfect and the windows don't look particularly clear. There are some scratches and marks on them in places. A roof is included and it's quite well moulded, with little holes for the vents to glue into later. The coach body is very nice indeed. The moulding is to a good quality and it comes pre-painted with printed numbers on the sides. It's worth noting that the ends of the coach are not painted though, and you will have to do that yourself. The coach underframe comes moulded in black plastic and again is to a good standard. You can see on the bottom where the various maker marks have been erased over time. The details are somewhat simple, but at least they are present. A small plastic bag holds all the small and loose parts. You get a metal weight, which will help make the coach a bit heavier and keep it on the track when it's in use. A small grey sprue holds the vents for the roof and you actually get more than you need, which is good in case you damage any of them. Two bogies are included and they are, again, moulded to a good standard. Four wheel sets are in this bag and you can notice that they have metal axles but plastic wheels, which if you're not a fan of you might want to consider replacing with some better versions. These ones look ok to me though. The plugs for the bogies are quite small, so you must make sure you keep these safe and don't lose them. Vacuum pipes are provided and they are moulded to a good standard. Finally, the smaller profile tension lock couplings are included in the kit but there is no NEM socket, so changing them to something better would require some modification of the bogies. Having taken a look at the parts and checking that they are all indeed present, it's time to start building the kit. The first step is to place the underframe on a flat surface and then add the coach body on top. It should pass through the clips on the chassis and according to the instructions there is a specific way it must go round. The slot should face towards you and the guard's end should be in your right hand. I pressed the coach body into place but found there was a little excess plastic preventing it from sitting flush. I scraped it away with a knife and then retried the fit. With the coach body in place, the weight can be popped into its slot before the seat insert can be added. And this is where I met some trouble. 
The tabs on the chassis are supposed to pass up through the seat insert and clip it all into place. But the holes in the seat insert are misaligned. At least they are if you follow the DePaul instructions. It took me a while to figure it out, but the instructions are wrong. I don't understand how they managed to get them wrong, but they have. I mean, it's literally their own product, and on closer inspection, you can see that they even realised it was wrong and didn't change it. Let me show you what I mean. The instructions tell you to put the coach body this way round, and when you line up the guard's end, the seat insert physically doesn't fit. It just doesn't line up with the clips. The underframe should be the other way round, so the clips all line up. And if we look at the instructions, you can see the change in the picture where Dapol noticed, but didn't bother to change it. This caused me about 20 minutes of confusion, and I even had to look online to see if I was just getting it wrong. As Occam's razor would suggest, the simple explanation is usually correct. In this case, it's not me, it's not the kit, it's the instructions that's wrong. With that incredibly annoying realisation out of the way, let's try to move on with our lives. I found the fit of the coach to be slightly loose, so ran a little Tamiya extra thin cement down the seams to help hold it together. I then added the weight and seat insert for the last time, and in the correct direction. The two clear window strips can now be removed from their sprue, and any rough or excess plastic cleaned up. I then identified the correct side for each window, and they are simply slid between the inside of the coach body and the seat insert. They should snap into place inside the holes for the windows, but it will take some effort and care to get this done. It is a very tight fit, and I was worried I might break the plastic as I did this. Fortunately, I managed to do it without any issues, and you won't need any glue as the fit is so incredibly tight. The vents on the roof can now be cut from the sprue and inserted into the holes in the roof. I found the holes to be quite tight, so opened them up ever so slightly with a drill bit. I found that they then pushed into these holes much better. A small amount of cement was used from the inside to make sure they stayed in place. A bit of care was needed to make sure they were all at the correct orientation. That is, with the band over the top in line with the length of the coach, and the pointed bits sticking out to the sides. Humbrol 32 dark grey acrylic paint was thinned with Tamiya X20A acrylic thinners and then brushed onto the roof. This is actually the paint colour recommended by DePaul in the instructions to do this. And it was thinned so that the brush strokes would not be visible when it dried. A number of thin coats might be needed though. Humbrol matte black number 33 acrylic was also thinned and then this was carefully painted onto the ends of the coach, making sure that I didn't get it on the sides. I used a fine brush to do this, and again a few coats would be needed. The bogies are relatively straightforward to assemble. The coupling retainer is snapped into place, and then this is followed by the coupling. The wheels can then be pushed into their holes by carefully bending the bogie frames outwards until the axle pins drop into their slots. I just had to take a bit of care here to make sure I didn't break anything. But when that's done, you should have two quite freewheeling bogies. The retaining pin can then be pushed up from the bottom of the bogey and into the slot in the chassis of the coach. It doesn't matter which end you put each bogey, as they are both identical. When that is done, you should have a nearly finished coach, with some pivoting bogies attached, allowing for a reasonably freewheeling model. The black vacuum pipes can now be cut from their little sprue and carefully pushed into the right holes in the ends of the coach. Again, a little cement was used to make sure they stayed in place. The roof is now dry and it can be clipped into place on the top of the coach. It lines up with the moulded clips on the window parts. It's worth noting that this has to go on in one direction as it's not symmetrical with the off-centre vents being towards the passenger end and not towards the brake end. And that's it, my coach is now finished. I think it looks pretty good and it only really took about an hour to build, but most of that time was taken up messing about with the instructions or waiting for paint to dry. 
Realistically, if you've got a few of these to build and you get quite efficient at it, it shouldn't be a time consuming job. But how does it run? I put it on my garden layout to see how it would cope. My track isn't perfect and the curves can be questionable in places, but generally it managed absolutely fine. It stays on the track even through the most complicated or demanding track work on my layout. The coupling seems to operate completely normally, but I did notice that sometimes, because it is a different size to other tension locks that I have, it might lock up and cause the coach to derail, just like this. But that wasn't a common occurrence and I'm sure there are things that could be done to reduce this problem. The coach is reasonably freewheeling and as you can see on the gradient, it was more than happy to roll off on its own. The one thing I did notice was that it had a slight wobble as it ran. It's not too obvious from far away, but up close it becomes quite clear. It might be due to those plastic wheels, but at the moment it's something I can live with. I think it's time to talk about the history of the kit. I did some research on this model, but it would seem that it's very difficult to find actual history about them. As far as I could find out, these were once part of the Airfix model railways range, but DePaul purchased these kits from them in the 1980s and have been producing them since then. You can get different versions of this coach, both in kit and ready to run format. The main differences between the two are that the kit version is about half the price of the ready to run coach, which means that you could get a more cost effective rolling stock collection if you're willing to put in a little work. Speaking of price, this one retails for around the £10 mark in the UK at the time this video was made. I think that is a reasonable price for this, as many ready to run coaches can be three or even four times the cost of this. Some of the other versions are a little more expensive though, particularly if they have the corridor gangways or more complicated lining and painting applied in the factory, but it will only be a matter of a few pounds or so. So in conclusion, I think this is a very cost effective way of building up a fleet of carriages for your model railway, particularly if you are willing to put a little effort into them or prefer building things just like me. The beauty of a kit like this means that you can personalize it as much as you like, which I know I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable doing to a considerably more expensive model. Improvements to this could be the inclusion of lights, seated passengers, painted seats and possibly even repainting them into any livery you like. I would be more than happy in getting a few more of these, perhaps the non-brake versions so that I get a reasonable rake for a loco to pull. It's worth noting that Dapol do a number of different versions of this kit purely with different running numbers. So when you're in the shop keep an eye out for that and you can get a rake without repeats of the same coach. I'm sure aftermarket running numbers are available though if you wanted to do your own. The only area this kit is really let down in is the instructions, because let's face it, Dapol basically got them completely wrong, then corrected themselves, but didn't bother to spend five minutes to go back and rewrite the instructions properly, which would have helped prevent a lot of annoyance on my part and perhaps for other people, and it could have resulted in damaged models as they try to fix the model to conform to the instructions. I know I certainly thought about cutting the tabs to make it look like the instructions before I realized they were wrong. But that aside, I enjoyed building this model and I really enjoy watching it roll around my layout. What did you think of this build? Let me know in the comments below if you'd get one of these for yourself. Don't forget you can always post suggestions for other videos or builds you might like to see in the future too. As always, honourable mention to my patrons over on Patreon, whose amazing support goes into directly allowing me to be able to complete projects like this. To find out what pledging your support means, including early access to videos, take a look at the link in the description. You can always connect with me on social media too. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and my own Discord server. Oh, and if you made it this far and enjoyed the video, please click that like button. Also, please consider subscribing with notifications on so that you never miss a future modeling video. All that's left to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the workbench again next time.